Hi everybody, my name is Nick Justician. I teach virtual production at Drexel University and I'm in a bit of a bare bones setup here inside Unreal Engine so that we can demonstrate how to use an external hardware keyer with Unreal Engine for virtual production. So for the purposes of this video, I'm using a Blackmagic Design uh, 8TEM Constellation. This is an HD2ME. So there are two multi-effects units built in, which means it has four different keyers per multi-effects unit. So there's actually a total of eight keyers built into it. So let's take a quick look here, uh, an overview of this. So this is um, kind of the, the product image for this. Um, the big deal here is all the inputs and outputs, right? So we've got 20 different inputs, all SDI, and there is also 12 different outputs, also SDI. And um, there's a multi-view pair of outputs, and we're going to use one of these in the course of the demonstration, just so you can see what's going on inside uh, with the keyer. And one other note is that there is a reference input. So this can be gen locked and, and therefore uh, frame linked, of course, with our deck link boards or whatever we're using uh, for video capture inside the computer. So this is really the configurable outputs and the keyers all work together. So as we work through this, what we're going to be doing is taking a single camera feed in input one and outputting both a camera feed as well as a mask from uh, outputs one and three. And that means that we need a way in our computer to receive more more than one video input at a time. So for my particular setup, I'm using a DeckLink Duo 2. So the DeckLink Duo 2 has a, uh, a Genlock Ref input, but then it has four other SDI connections. And each of these can be either an input or an output. In uh, this particular demo, for the purposes of the demo, what I'm going to do here is uh, use inputs uh, or connectors one and three as inputs, as well as connector four. So one and three are connected to those outputs one and three from the constellation. So that we'll be able to feed the camera to one of them and the, uh, the resulting key mask to the other. And then again, uh, just for the sake of the demonstration, I've got the multi-view output of the uh, deck link, I'm sorry, not the deck link, the uh, ATEM constellation. Multi-view is going into input four. Even with all three of these sockets used, I still have one left that I could use as an output from Unreal to then feed my uh, 3D environment with the keyed video back into the uh, constellation for then further processing and such. So. That's a pretty powerful setup. You don't need to use a duo board or a board that has so many inputs and outputs. You could just use multiple video capture boards, right? So you could have multiple deck links or you can use AJA cards, whatever. Um, but uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm, I'm using this board. So this is my hardware setup. And so let's take a look at the software that controls the ATEM itself. If you're used to using ATEM minis, you're probably used to seeing a single panel here for program and preview and such. Uh, with a constellation, you actually have essentially multiple ATEM units built into a single box. Um, both units sharing all the same inputs and outputs. And um, you can use this a little bit for routing. Um, Again, because there's two different mix effects units, uh, each of them have their own set of keys, right? So there's four upstream keys per mix effect unit. So when I expand one, you see that I can select between upstream key one for ME1 or ME2. So we have um, eight total keyers. Uh, with this particular unit, we're limited to 12 outputs. So if we wanted to use this strictly as a keyer, we would be limited really to uh, a total of six camera sources because each of those would need to be uh, accompanied by a mask if we were feeding all six cameras into Unreal. For this demo, we're just going to use a single camera. So uh, again, one of the other things that I wanted to do was use the uh, multi-view output as a way of demonstrating what's going on inside the, uh, the constellation. So what I'm going to do is double click my media bundle here that I've already got bringing in the video from connector four. And right now I've just, you know, artificially con configured this to, to take in my duo one input. Uh, but if I drop down this arrow, um, you can see I can use my SDI 4K deck link board or any one of the four connections that are on the duo. So connection four is 
the uh, multi view. So I'll select that and hit apply. And now we can see four different outputs from the multi view of the constellation. So this will give us an opportunity to see what's going on inside the constellation. So I'll save that and close that. And uh, if you don't know how to create a media bundle, I'll be showing that uh, in just a little bit once we uh, configure the constellation itself. So let's go back to our constellation control. And now you can see we have uh, three panels from the multi view visible. So let's configure the multi view output on the constellation. There's a little settings cog right here. Click on that. And uh, here in the settings, there's lots of different panels. And the multi view one is the one that we're interested in. And all of this is happening in real time in the hardware, right? So if I wanted to change this corner to be four videos, you know, each one of these could be either four or one. Uh, so this is very, very, very configurable. Right now, I have all four of these outputs configured to be feeding directly from camera one. But any of these could be any of the video signals that are coming in or going out of the constellation or even some of the processing stages. And that's what we're going to use this for. So instead of this upper right quadrant being camera one, I'm going to change that to be the mix effect one key one. So we're going to get the, the mask from ME one key one and have that show up here. There's nothing there. We haven't configured it yet. And then again, further demo, I'm just going to uh, change this feed instead of being camera one, I'm going to select, uh, the ME one output. So you could see that the composite that would be done just natively inside the constellation itself. So we haven't seen a change because right now that ME one output is camera one. So, um, we'll see this develop as we activate our keyers. So we'll go ahead and say done for that and uh, make sure that I am selected for ME1 here. So now we're looking at ME1. This is our key. This is our output, which is cam one. And what I'm going to do is switch my output to black because this program output ends up being the background of the composite from the uh, ME unit itself. All right, so let's work on our key. I'll go ahead and choose upstream key one. Again, mix effect one is selected. Uh, by default, it's Luma. We're going to switch to Chroma. We want solid white because our fill source by default is just a black signal. So we're going to choose that and instead select camera one. And so now camera one is coming in. And because I've practiced this, of course, I've already got green here and we're already pulling a bit of a key. So let me set this back uh, to the defaults and I'll just um, click on here to be able to set where are we sampling from. And so you could see uh, the ATEM lets me sample anywhere, uh, any location in the frame to uh, use as a key color. And so I think I'll just, uh, I'll just pick this. I mean, I have a pretty sloppy green screen, so we're not going to get the, the greatest results in the world, but here we go. We've got our uh, initial key pulled based on that. And this is all happening just inside the constellation, uh, but we're not seeing anything. We're just seeing black still coming out. And the reason that's happening is that we haven't activated the keyer um, in the ME one program output. So we'll activate the keyer and, uh, set it on air. And the reason we have, um, we want to make sure that's off is that you can see these settings for being able to change that chroma sampling, they deactivate, uh, when this keyer is on. So now that we have our color selected, now you can kind of see the result. You can see in the mask, we've got some chatter here. So I'm just going to, uh, solidify the background a little bit with this slider. We probably have some noise chatter, but um, we'll just live with that for now. So again, you can see all this is happening live inside the the ME unit, and uh, this is the single multi uh, view output from the uh, constellation. And we're seeing now this is the raw camera one feed, as is this. Uh, this is the mask, and then this is what the constellation would composite using black as the background. So if we wanted to take this video now and put it into our 3D environment in Unreal, we'll just need to take in the, the raw video feed from the camera that's coming out of the constellation as well as the mask. And uh, to do that, we want to make sure we configure the outputs appropriately from the constellation. So if I select this output menu, you can see each of the 12 outputs are selectable. Output one is set to camera one and output three is also set to camera one. So I want to take output three and change that to be the ME one key one mask. So now output three from the constellation is actually this video right here. 
All right, so let's get to the uh, Unreal Engine side of things. We'll go into Unreal. And here's where we'll show how to create those media bundles. I'm going to need to create a media bundle for each of those two outputs, the, the Cam 1 and the Output 3, that is uh, the mask. So let's right click. And I, I want to work on the mask first. So I'm going to go right click Media, Media Bundle. And I will call this BMD uh, Duo. And I'll call this 03 because this will be the, the 03 input of the duo. And I'll double click that bundle and then it'll let me choose my media source. So it's going to be a Black Magic media source. And I will select, um, let's get this to pop up. There we are. This will be the duo 03 and our video standard HD, progressive 30 frames. Apply that. And uh, that should be it. So that should, in theory, work. Let's save that and close it for now and drag this out into our scene. And there it is. And what's nice about this now is we've got a dedicated mask feed. So I can scale this up and see, like, I've got some gray going on here. So um, let me just move this over here and fill that in as well. So I'll just go back over to my ME controls here and solidify that foreground a little bit you know again I, i've got my camera gained up so um we want to be careful here let's deactivate that for a second and sample this and see if a different location gives us a better mask you can see again this is all live and so this is software control telling the atem what to do and so now we'll activate that and let's see if we can ah there we go okay so now we are, have a little bit more solidity here um you know we've got a little chatter but that's okay this is not an ultimat uh maybe in the future we'll, we'll get a uh, tutorial on how to do this with an ultimat unit uh let's just stick with that so there is our mask for now and now we need another uh media bundle feed for the camera itself so again i'll right click media and media bundle we'll call this bmd duo 01 since that's where our camera feed is coming in and double click on this and we'll set our input to black magic media source and it's going to be uh, deck like duo 01 and we're all good apply and save all right so now i should be able to drag this into the scene and we've got our camera ah Okay, so I forgot to set this to sRGB. So let's double click this media bundle again and look for under video is sRGB. Let's select that. So you can see how uh, our colors were washed out with that unchecked and, and uh, by checking it now we're seeing our sRGB. So we'll save that and close it. Um, all right, so we have our mask and we have our video feed. Now we want to put this to use in a material uh, so that this mask is keying this video. So we're going to create a custom material and we're going to take advantage of the fact that these folders that were created when we created the bundles, uh, they have the textures that we need. So if I double click on Duo 1, there's the texture from the video camera. If I click on Duo 3 folder, there's the texture of the mask. So out here in my um, IO folder, I'll just right click and I'll create a new material and I'll just call this BMD key underscore mat. I'll just save that and double click to open it up. And here's our material. Okay, so what I'll want to do here is uh, set this material for translucency. By default, the blend mode is opaque, and I could use mask, but translucent uh, is uh, better for getting the, the grayscale of the mask and, and getting uh, a better use out of that mask. Uh, if I go masked, the main advantage is that um, shadows uh, will see this better in, in Unreal, but uh, these days I've just been using translucent, and so that works. And let's set our preview to be a plane so that that'll look like it makes a little bit more sense and so we need a base color and that base color is going to be the video camera feed so I'll go here in my content drawer and uh, double click on that duo one folder and drag in the camera material and take sRGB and that'll be the color so now we can see that color coming in but again since I um, 
took this material and I set it to be translucent. We have an opacity socket here and we'll feed that with the mask. So back to Blackmagic IO over here in the content and I'll go to the Duo 3. There's my mask. Drag that into my material. And because the mask is a visible in the R, G, and B of this, I can take any one of these and connect it to opacity. So I'll just take green and pop it in there. And there we go. There is our mask being applied uh, to this material. Now, one other thing I could do is if I'm going to be uh, keying multiple cameras, what I could do is create instances of this material uh, to handle the other cameras and feed different textures in here so that I don't have to redefine this over and over again. So I could right click here and convert this to a parameter and I'll just call this uh, color fill. And so that's our color feed. And then I'll right click this and convert that to a parameter and call this uh, mask. All right, so now that these are parameters, if I create instances of this material, these two values will be configurable. So let's take a look at how that works. I'll just save this out and close this panel for now. Okay, so with that saved, we'll close this, go back up here to the material. And so now I can right click and create a material instance. And uh, as my suffix here, I'll just call this MI instead of Matt. And I'll just call this key 01 since uh, this is my camera feed 01. And now when I double click this, instead of the node graph, I've got my uh, sample here. And um, I can activate these two and I could replace any one of these inputs. So for example, I know that my multi view color is available here and so I could use this to be the color of uh, this feed okay so that's a bad example of course but um, if I had multiple cameras this means that I could uh, create instances of that material and um, and bring those feeds in so let's just put this back to the way it was and I'll just deactivate these and close this so there's my material instance um, Finally, to put all of that to use, I'll just uh, bring out a plane. So I'll go here to um, basic and not basic shapes. There we are, plane. And so now we have a plane here and we'll drag our material instance onto it and then rotate this into place. Come on. I don't know if real estate on my mouse pad here. And there we go. And maybe uh, let's just expand this so that uh, we are 1.6 wide and 0.9 high. And there's our 16 by nine. And there I am, I'm keyed. And that keying is being done by the external hardware, uh, but now it's available here in Unreal Engine. So uh, there are further optimizations that, that could be done. I could work a bit with the mathematics and the material uh, for the mask. So I could do some further optimization of the mask. Uh, we could take a look at, uh, for example, Duo 3 is the input, does, does changing the sRGB setting actually improve things? And that actually does seem to, to give us a better uh, result in terms of how that mask looks. You can see that, again, without that, I'm getting a little extra chatter. Uh, so I'll just put that on for the sake of this. Um, don't know if that's mathematically correct, uh, but aesthetically, that, that gave us a, a slight improvement. So. There you go. Um, again, this could be repeated for as many cameras as is supported by your hardware. And uh, this way we're using the external keying of a Blackmagic Constellation uh, for virtual production in Unreal Engine. So I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.